words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. Jeremiah 15:16. The law is one of the most explosive issues in Christianity, but why should it be? It doesn't make any sense that it would cause such hard reactions from people who claim to know him. There is so much intense opposition to the law that if it is even lightly mentioned in many circles, it gets a heavy negative response. If a Christian dares to practice the actual new covenant, remember, that's the law written on a heart of flesh, there is a grave risk of censure and expulsion from the circles. There is another pun in there somewhere. I'm Bruce Bertram, and welcome to another world-famous video from the Word of God Ministries. If the Bible is just read naturally, and by that I mean without explanation from others, it seems plain we are to follow the law. We keep seeing hints of it, of this as we read, like flickers of motion at the edge of our vision. When we ask about it, we get a lot of excuses for why we shouldn't follow the law. I know this because I've heard them all, and before I discovered the truth of whole Bible Christianity, used some of them myself to explain why I didn't follow. I also used them to help other people understand. In this series of videos based on chapter 7 of our book, Whole Bible Christianity, we look at 20 of the major objections or helpful explanations. Some of them we've gone over a little already because most of the time you can't even get a conversation started without dealing with them up front. In the previous video we looked at the objections of Judaizing, um, the crucifixion changed everything, and shadows. In this video we'll look at the concept of everything is clean or as I like to call it, it's all good. It's all good is from Genesis 9 and Acts 10 as the main scriptures. And the whole issue of food somehow sticks in the craw of many. For some reason we want to justify eating whatever we want. We use scripture like this to do it. But the Spirit explicitly says that in latter times some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons by means of the hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. Men who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from foods which God has created to be gratefully shared in by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. For it is sanctified by means of the word of God and prayer. 1 Timothy 4, 1-5 this is one of the scriptures, see also Mark 7, 18 through 19, used to excuse what a person wants to eat before they even read the Bible. In other words, they want to eat pork or shellfish and they look around in the Word to see if they can find permission. Here they think they find a magic formula where they can pray over anything, consume it, and be okay. But we know that doesn't really work. If something is sanctified by the Word of God, that means the word tells us how to set it apart the definition of sanctified that's what leviticus 11 does for instance god sanctifies or sets apart things in that chapter that are food and things that are not those who believe and know the truth are those who know the word and follow what he says the truth is god's word and god says there are certain things that we shouldn't be eating that is much different than a doctrine or teaching of demons. The two situations mentioned here don't have anything to do with God's law. Obviously, forbidding marriage would not come under the heading of God's command. Equally obviously, not everything is good to eat, even if it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. We can't just pray over some poison hemlock, for instance, and turn it into sugar. Even if it's clean, hemlock is a plant, it is still poison. There are lots of things we can't or shouldn't eat, no matter how much we pray. Foods which God has created to be gratefully shared does not include pork or shellfish or any of the other things he told us were not food. Even Noah knew the difference between clean and unclean animals, Genesis 7-2. 
God did not ever say that pork, shellfish, dog, cat, horse, or rabbit were food. Somewhere along the line, somebody decided that if it tasted good, it was okay to eat. But God designed certain animals for purposes which did not include barbecues. He told us there are things that are food and things that are not food. Jesus, in declaring all foods clean, in Mark 7:19, if he did, then he wasn't talking about stuff that isn't food. Leviticus 11 tells us that there are things we can eat and things we can't. God doesn't say food we can eat and food we can't. Things we can't eat are, by definition, not food. Clean things are food. Unclean things are not food. And even if a food item is clean, that still doesn't mean it is okay to eat. Like, say, spoiled potatoes. Besides, in Matthew 15, 20, Jesus said that the lack of hand washing does not make food unclean. He didn't say that suddenly everything is okay to eat. Genesis 9, 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. This is another argument for eating anything. A small problem, however. Every moving thing that lives doesn't mean everything can be eaten. For instance, though people are included in every moving thing that lives, obviously they are not to be eaten. All green plants cannot be eaten either. Some are poisonous. Others are distasteful, like moldy bread or rotten fruit. There are meats that are deadly poison too, or are deadly if they are not handled just so, like lobster. We even treat plain water with caution, boiling and filtering it to clean it. Meat was made available, but there is nothing in the text to suggest all meat is okay to eat. God nailed the issue down further at Sinai, probably because there were a lot of people who ate anything without exercising the sense God gave a turnip. Peter's vision in Acts 10 is another scripture improperly applied. First, Peter didn't rise, kill, and eat. Second, the account does not say that everything in the sheet was declared clean by God. The sheet wasn't the point. The point was to make sure clean and unclean were rightly labeled. Clean and unclean animals mix together all the time. The unclean animals do not make the clean ones unclean. Only in relation to eating is there a difference. Under the scriptural law, Peter would have been fine if he had taken an animal and had a barbecue. But according to Rabbi's reasoning, unclean animals made the clean ones unclean. Which doesn't make any sense. Peter was refusing to eat because of the rabbin rabbinical ruling, not the law. God reminded Pete, through a refresher course from his word, that he, not rabbis, makes the call on what is clean and what is unclean. Jews wrongly thought, and many still think, that only Jews clean, are saved, and Gentiles, unclean, are not. God was pointing Peter back to his word and away from tradition. Third, Peter tells us the meaning of the vision, as it is written. And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him, and yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. Acts 10.28 Or again, Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. But in every nation, the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. Acts 10, 34 and 35. Division had nothing to do with changing the laws of clean and unclean animals. But it had everything to do with removing the unclean label from Gentiles. This label was falsely applied by Jewish leaders against what God intended. In the vision, God was getting the situation back to right. Obviously, not all Gentiles are clean unless they fear him and do what is right. Cornelius was such a right-doing person, but there was still a roadblock to being included in the local church. Not because of the law, but because of elementary principles of the world. Thanks for watching. Next up is a video looking at the subjects of freedom in Christ, salvation is enough, and I don't hear Jesus from chapter 7 of our book, Whole Bible Christianity. 
A draft of the book is available on our website, www.wholebible.com, if you'd like to see it all written out. Subscribe to our channel, please. Register on our blog, too, because we'd like to talk to you. Or make some constructive comments below. Shalom.